Jesus, he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. From heaven's perspective, what does it mean to be a laborer? What does it mean to be a true laborer, entrusted with something from heaven? I want to tell you that there are few laborers in the earth right now. There are few laborers in the earth right now. Few people in the earth that when a man or a woman comes into a city, the city is trembling underneath the weight of the power of the word. These men are turning the world upside down. It's not a fanciful idea. God is restoring this ministry. God is restoring this apostolic ministry in our day and in our time. Those that turn the world upside down, that preach another king, and that preach it with signs and wonders, and that go to the links and the depths of love, that walk as he walked. Let this thing strike down all your ideas of how anointed you are. How many things you have going for you. Let this strike you to the core, to where all it is is you hear these words screaming through you. There's few from heaven that I can entrust myself to. There's few from heaven's perspective that I can take the deep mysteries of my heart and give them to human vessels and let them manifest my son in the earth. That's a holy thing. I mean, the laborers are few. What an indictment in our day when we have churches on every corner, ministries on every radio station, TV station, people everywhere, and there are few who are really standing in the place to be counted worthy to be a laborer. This is a very sober and weighty thing to be trusted with the gospel, and it's not a light thing that God just hands out. I don't think we understand the holiness and the, and the awesomeness and the fear that God puts upon His mysteries and that God puts upon the gospel. This is a holy thing. And I tell you, God just doesn't throw it around to any passerby. -er. These are the mysteries hidden within Himself. It's the very mystery of Christ. And I tell you, He wants to reveal and manifest it into real human vessels. He wants to grip us with Christ. Now this is about human vessels being the embodiment of Christ in the earth. That's what this thing is about. Christ manifesting through His body, which is the church. There is one plumb line. There is one doorway into being a laborer. There is one occupation. There is one qualification. There is one place to where a laborer is born, is nurtured, and, and matures into. It's in the place of prayer. He says, pray. We feel the calling of an evangelist. We feel the calling of, of a singer. You feel it. Whatever. Guys, I want to tell you, I want you to be wounded with a higher thing than having a nice CD. Than having a nice home group. Or having a nice outreach. On, on whatever it may be. Your nice little dream, would you blow it? Because God wants to take it a million times more. He wants His Son manifested in the earth. If we could just lay down that which we think defines success. That which we think defines popularity. And that defines or the dream of our heart. He wants to kill it and raise up Christ in us. Sending out labors, guys. That's what we want to cry out for. We want to send it. We want a baptism of fire, for real. I don't want a little... When I talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, where I have a couple of tongues and I fall down. Guys, we got to get a higher vision. No, no, we got to get a high vision. High vision, real baptism of fire. And when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, then you shall be witnesses. Witnesses. Guys, I tell you, it took 120 people to turn the whole world upside down. This is all for the sake of the, the nations of the earth. Isn't it? It's about His fame and His glory in the nations of the earth, isn't it? This is not about us and our little agenda and our little things. This is about His name and His fame in the nations of the earth. He wants to catch us up and set us free from us. And guys, I want to tell you that there is a true sending from heaven. That there are real days and real history and real times to where we come in one day one way and we leave another. I tell you, you can't tell me all throughout history that you are living for one day that will change everything. You look at one time in Scripture, there are those one, there are those encounters that take people from being foul-mouthed fishermen to being apostles of the Lamb. There are encounters with God that take Ezekiel. There are encounters of God that take Isaiah from showing back up in the temple to being one, longing to be a sent one. There's ones that take Jeremiah from being a, a dorky youth into being his hand touched by the hand of God. Moses with a burning bush. Time and time and time again, we are contending for ascending. If we get sent, people will bend. For real, we have been so used to seeing no one bend at the gospel. If we would contend for the high vision, God says the high vision is you being sent before the throne. Voices proceeding from the throne. I want to be a voice that proceeds from the throne. I want to be a sent one. There was a man sent from God. His name was John. Real human being, a real vessel containing, bore witness to the light that all through him might believe. Real vessel. May this wound us. I have nothing to give. I have no 
neat networking idea, no neat ingenuity way to reach anybody. I can't do anything golf. And he wants to drive that down more and more and more and more till it strikes us at our core. And to where that is where true prayer begins to give birth. And that's a creative prayer. That awakens something in heaven and trusts himself to people. That we need God and God alone. That you are our only hope. Christ. Christ. Jesus is the hope of the nations. Jesus is the hope of the nations. You are the hope of the nations. Jesus, you are the glory of the Father. It's you, Jesus. So, oh, it's Christ in you. Christ manifesting through you. It's Christ. That's the high vision. We ask you, Jesus, would it please the Father? Oh, God, would it please you again? Would it please you in this day, God? I tell you, another abortion going on right now. Got another affair. Another divorce paper. Got it. More and more and more injustices. Another rape right now, God. It's not okay. It's not okay that I live on the fringes of this religious system, God. And I haven't gotten wounded. And I haven't cast myself upon the wisdom of God. God, forgive us.